Hello everyone! This video describes the detailed steps involved in creating a physical database design. It also provides tips and guidelines on how to perform this highly iterative process. The first part will be presented by me, Dinia, while the second part will be presented by my colleague, Ms. Daisy DeCastro. So let's get started. Database design is connected with application design. The idea is to design first a database without thinking about the actual database system. It begins with a conceptual design of a highly abstract data model in the form of an entity relationship diagram. This diagram is the basis of the logical design phase to create a set of relational schemas. Once the conceptual design is transformed into a logical design and normalized, we are ready for the last phase, the implementation of a physical database. At this phase, a logical data model is translated into a set of physical database structures specific to the database management system. In other words, SQL clauses to create the database are written. In parallel with these activities, application programs are designed. The implementation of the programs can start when a database is created and data has been added in. Suppose we'd like to create a very simple restaurant database. We first create a conceptual design of the, of the restaurant using an ER diagram. We have the entities, waiter and customer, where waiters serve customers. Attributes that describe our entities are also identified. Next, in our logical design, we define the primary and foreign keys resulting in a relational schema. A waiter's primary key is their tax identification or TIN number, while a customer will be assigned a unique customer ID. The service entity will have three parts to its primary key. One is TIN, a foreign key from waiter, another is customer ID from customer, and the last is the date when the customer is served to distinguish data entries between repeat customers. A database administrator considers several physical design factors to develop a highly optimal, cohesive, and secure database. These factors include, but not are limited to, volume of data, audit, security, integrity requirements, backup and recovery requirements, efficient database loading, and of course, business requirements. Most relational databases are usually partitioned into several logical storage units. In some commercial SQL-based databases, these logical storage units are called table spaces. By using table spaces, an administrator can manage physical files used by the database to optimize performance. A table space is a fixed size that can be expanded when it gets full. One of the first design tasks that the database administrator is to simply define and name the database, and then set up the required database table space. Back to our restaurant database, we translate our entities into tables and attributes into columns. The following characteristics must be assigned to each specific column in an appropriate fashion. Column name, data type, data column size, whether the column value is mandatory, and range of value that are allowed for the columns.
Some basic rules of thumb that might help to optimize the general performance of a database when associating tables to table spaces are to store index and data components in table spaces on different disks, to segregate tables with high insert or delete rate from more stable tables in size, to place tables with high access rates in table spaces on different disk drives. A foreign key is a column or combination of columns that contain some primary key values from another database table. In our serves table, TIN and customer ID are foreign keys which make up a composite primary key along with date. Indices are used to retrieve data from a database very fast. Users and applications cannot see indices. They are just used to speed up searches or queries. Indices can be created on one or multiple table columns. The database administrator should carefully weigh the advantages and disadvantages of using indices. Generally, Databases indices should be built only for non-key table columns that are searched regularly or when storage and processing overhead is not an issue. Clusters can contain one or multiple tables that together share one or more columns. They are transparent to users and application developers, like indices. Consider clustering tables when they are primarily queried, but not modified, and records from the tables are frequently queried together or joined. Properly used table clusters offer the following benefits. Disk input-output is reduced for joins of clustered tables. Access time improves for joins of clustered tables. Less storage is required to store related table and index data because the cluster key value is not stored repeatedly for each row. On the other hand, clustering tables is not appropriate in the following when the tables are frequently updated, when the tables frequently require full table scan, or when the tables require truncating. My colleague, Alma May Bernalis, in her topic of creating a logical database design video, has a really good explanation and example of creating database views. Data view allows the database designer to create different representation of the data that is stored in the database tables. It can be used to restrict access to a predetermined set of rows and or columns in a table. It can also be used to facilitate the work of the programmers by allowing them to select data from several tables without forcing them to do a join. As an example, I will show you how to create a data view in an MS SQL Server. In our SQL Server, we have the Sales Database. In this database, we have customer table, order item, orders, and product table. Now I would like to create a data view for all the customers together with all the details of their ordered products. And then, we select all the columns that should be displayed in the sales data view. We choose the customer name, the customer address, customer city, customer state, the ordered quantity, the order date, the description of the product, the finish of the product, uh, the price of the product, and lastly, the date of its release. So now we can save our order data view.
we name it order V. So now we will try to check our data view. As you can see, we have now the customer, all the other details of the customer, and also the details of their ordered products. Automated database design tools generate data definition statements, manage various database objects, and can even reverse engineer several types of physical relational databases. So that's it. Daisy will now talk about the rest of the topic in creating a physical database design.